Welcome to Magic Gearing Guide in which I will try to simplify the upgrade path as much as I can to help you build your way to the end game. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you like my RuneScape content, don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching this video, chances are you already have a better gearing setup than the one you can see on screen because it is fairly low tier. That being said, every build should at least have a decent weapon for starters. This could be the Vanquish which you can get from the quest point shop, or a Chaotic Staff, or a Vitor's Wand and Book, or maybe just a Crystal Staff. The point I'm trying to make is that early on, the most important upgrade is to get a decent weapon. The second most important upgrade is to unlock the Guthic Staff and its special attack. All you need to do to unlock it is complete the Mage Arena minigame and then cast the Divine Storm spell 100 times inside the Mage Arena. The special attack of the Guthic Staff is quite strong and also lowers your target's defense, so definitely something you should unlock early on. Doing that minigame will also provide you with a God Cape that is actually quite good stat-wise and should be worn for quite some time. Next, you should go ahead and collect 50,000 Dungeoneering tokens and get level 62 Dungeoneering which is quite easy to get for really dungeon token farming by the way to get yourself a ring of vigor why because it saves adrenaline when using ultimate abilities and it's going to be very useful late game once you turn it into a passive as well now the ring stats aren't too bad but if you want to get the most out of your character getting the asylum surgeon's ring early on is also a good idea you would then only use the Ring of Vigor as a switch when using ultimate abilities. The Silent Surgeon Ring is a little tricky to get as you need to complete the Broken Home quest in another 37 minutes the second time around, which is a challenge, but I'm sure you can do it with a guide. The Asylum Surgeon Ring has a chance to prevent adrenaline loss when using thresholds and also has a chance to save adrenaline when using a special attack. Now, I wouldn't say the armor matters too much in the early game and lower tiers of PVM, but skeletal armor or something like lunar armor is going to be better for you than mystic armor. So if you want to get that as your final upgrade in this tier, go ahead and do that. Before we move on to the next tier, I do want to mention a couple things you should unlock early game and otherwise you should unlock it in the mid game, being the sunshine ability from the World Wakes quest, the Devotion ability and Tusker's Wrath ability, which you can both get from the Anima Islands D&D, and finally the Smoke Tendrils ability, which you get from the Dig Site quest. All of these are things you're going to want to have when PVMing or doing Slayer. Next is the mid tier, and I'd say that with this setup, you'd be able to do pretty much any content in the game with some practice and decent ability rotation. Much like the low tier setup, your first upgrade is going to be a weapon upgrade, in this case the Wand and Orb of the Cyber Elders, as these are weapons that are relatively affordable, give you tier 90 accuracy and tier 80 damage. Now if you're only able to afford the main hand, there's nothing wrong with going with something cheaper as your offhand for now, as your offhand only accounts for about one third of your damage. So if you want to buy one of the Cyber Elders and let's say an Abyssal Orb or a Vitus Book, given that they are more affordable when you're watching this video, until you get the Orb of the Cyber Elders as your offhand, you can do so. Your next upgrade will be Ganodermic Armor, but I do want to mention that you should unlock the Anime Dead spell by completing the City of Sintistan quest, which is a quest you're going to need to complete as a mage anyway because it gives you access to even more powerful spells and the anime did spell which is a defensive spell that allows you to reduce incoming damage by a flat amount based on your defense level and armor's defense rating so it's very very strong now if you're wondering why we're not using a staff and instead camping dual weapons it's because this is far more effective nowadays especially thanks to the next upgrade being the greater concentrated blast ability greater concentrated blast is one of the most powerful basic abilities dealing 160.2 percent average ability damage and it gives you a plus 15 percent chance to critical strike or critical hit on your next attack. That is insane for something that you can use every 5.4 seconds and is the reason why dual world magic is so strong. So this is important to get early on. Your next upgrade will be to upgrade your Amulet of Glory to a Blood Necklace, either a Blood Amulet of Fury if you want to gear from multiple styles or a Blood Arcane Stream Necklace which will require some Dungeoneering tokens. But if you like questing, getting the Dragon Rider Amulet by completing the One of a Kind quest which has pretty hefty requirements to, you know, get to, is a good choice as well because it increases the amount of damage Dragon Breath does by 10% and has a 10% chance of burning the opponent with a bleed effect. Your next upgrade will be the Blast Diffusion Boots which will allow you to charge the Detonate Threshold and AoE Threshold twice as fast. Then, because it's so cheap, and only because it's so cheap, you should get a Scripture of Jazz. This god book is simply DPS increase for your character, because when it does proc, it will track the amount of damage you deal for about 10 seconds, and after that, release 20% of that total damage to your opponent 
or target immediately. The next upgrade will be the Corruption Blast ability, which is unlocked from a Maz Capability Codex, and nowadays I think will set you back around 50 million GP. This ability is a 223% average ability damage bleed, which does spread to other targets, making it a very effective AoE bleed. This is by far one of the most important abilities to unlock after Greater Concentrated Blast for both Slayer and PVM. Next up, we have Carapax Wrist Wraps, and only because they're so damn cheap. What these things do is, after using the Dragon Breath ability, you have about 6 seconds to use the Combust ability, and when used within 6 seconds of Dragon Breath, you will deal all the damage Combust does instantly, and it will deal 25% more damage than normal. The final upgrade is kind of hard to put in the upgrade order, but I suggest you get one anyway. It's an optional upgrade, but what it does is it allows you to store four types of runes, 16,000 of each by the way, in a single slot, either in your inventory or when equipped. It also has a 25% chance to not consume runes when using a combat spell. So it's a nice thing. It's quality of life. Get one because you're going to want these and they save you some money when using spells like Insight Fear, which use a lot of money in terms of rune costs. Now, everything combined here will set you back around 262 million GP, which if you think about it, is really not that bad. It really is quite affordable, this setup. And this setup will allow you to do a lot of PVM, okay? Pretty much anything. But there are also some other things I suggest unlocking, including the ancient spells and anime dead, like I mentioned earlier. The Vampirism and Maniacal Aura for Wars Wares by just simply killing bosses and using Marks of War. At this point, you should consider perking out your weapons. Now, I do have a full guide about this linked in the description below. But in short, your weapon should have precise 6 equilibrium 4 as a budget perk setup. If you don't have Ancient Invention, you could also just do something like precise 4 equilibrium 2. Just make sure you have something on your weapons. As for your armor, consider putting something like Crackling 4 and the Relentless plus Biting perk on your body. As for your legs, Impatient 4 and Enhanced Devoted 4 are two good options. Now this isn't everything of course, perking in itself is something you need to take a look at, but those are some examples. Speaking of perks, getting a Planted Feet switch, which will increase the duration of your Sunshine ability by 25% is recommended, as I think that's about a 5% DPS increase when used in combination with the Sunshine ability, so definitely worth getting. The Berserker's Fury Relic Power, which requires level 56 Archaeology, is another very good upgrade for only about 18 million GP, giving you up to 5.5% more damage in every single style the lower your health is. Getting a high tier shield like a Chaotic Shield or perhaps a Merciless Kite Shield is also recommended because it will allow you to heal more from using the Resonance ability. The Ring of Vigor can be turned into passive by completing the Extinction Quest. This will allow you to camp a different ring without you needing to switch to the Ring of Vigor for the Sunshine ability, for example the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. And of course, unlocking Overloads, Curses and getting a higher summoning level for both Combat Familiars and a Beast of Burden to hold your food is recommended. Now I know this might seem as much, but I'm only mentioning this because without these mentions, the guide really wouldn't be as complete and only focused on gear and not on unlocks. Now while I am trying to simplify it by summarizing the things you need to do, I can understand that this may seem confusing to some. In that case, be sure to check out the videos linked in the description below for some more assistance. Let's move on to the high tier setup. The first upgrade you're going to want to buy is an Amulet of Souls. It allows you to heal an average of 18.75% more when using Soul Split. Hence why I told you to unlock curses earlier. It also has the benefit of increasing the effectiveness of your protection prayers and deflection curses by giving them an increase in 10% damage reduction from 50 to 60% damage reduction. This amulet will also be used to upgrade to the Essence of Finality later in this upgrade order. Now because Anime Dead is so strong, you can simply stick to tank armor, but if you want a set of DPS armor, the cheapest you can get at tier 88 is Superior Zuriel's armor, although it does degrade to dust. That doesn't necessarily matter though, because you should only be using it for PVM scenarios. Now the only reason I'm suggesting this armor set of Revertus is because it's about one third of the price. So. All things considered, it's pretty affordable. In fact, the entire armor set will only set you back about 33 million GP. The next upgrade are Cinderbane Gloves. Now, Cinderbane Gloves are amazing. These things poison poisonable targets for you automatically and will give you a good amount of DPM more when used in combination with Chrome Incense Sticks and Weapon Poison++ plus 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 Potions. These things are an absolute must-have for every PVM or, or Slayer because they're just so good. Now, of course, they won't work on every single boss. In fact, bosses where you don't use Cinderbanes, you probably want to get yourself a Death Touch bracelet. However, Cinderbanes are more versatile, and that's why I'm recommending them, and I'm keeping it simple. After that, you're going to want to upgrade your main hand weapon to a Seismic Wand, and the only reason I'm not suggesting you get the offhand, the Singularity, straight away, 
is because it's 600 mil plus. So yeah, they're expensive. The next upgrade you should get is the Essence of Finality, and that thing is so good because it's an Amateur Souls and its benefits, and a Reaper Necklace, which gives you extra accuracy in one, plus it allows you to store special weapon attacks like the Gothic Staff and scale it up to the tier of your weapon you're using. We then have the Limitless Ability, which is by far one of the best things you can buy. However, nowadays it's no longer 200 mil, instead it's 760 mil, which is serious money, but it does still provide a lot of value. What it does is it allows you to use thresholds at as low as 15% adrenaline instead of 50% for 6 seconds. This can be used to use defensive thresholds at low adrenaline, additional thresholds in a sunshine rotation, or it can be like a second adrenaline potion in your second sunshine rotation when your adrenaline potion is on cooldown. This thing is fantastic. The final upgrade you're going to want to get after that is a Seismic Singularity Tier 90 offhand. Then the final thing you need to complete your gear setup and become a true high level player is an Igneous Cal Medge, aka Magic Zerk Cape. This cape is so incredibly strong I made a dedicated video about it, and if you need any help getting this cape, which you should easily be able to get with this setup, be sure to check my guide linked in the description below. Now, while there are some things you want to unlock at this point, like some more archaeology relic powers and perhaps a ring of death to reduce your death costs, it's really, really difficult for me to give you an upgrade order beyond this point because RuneScape has so many different bits of gear and niche items and players have different playstyles and content they prefer and prices change all the time. I can, however, say that working towards the green crit stick from this point on should be your top priority. It's an incredibly fun build that relies on crit boosting items and gear. So you should get the Biting Perk, Reaver's Ring, Refidor's Grimoire, Fracture Star of Armor, of course, for the spec, and an Armor Battle Staff inside your Essence of Finality to dump after using your thresholds. After that, that's when you can start considering to get stuff like Magma Tempest, Best in Slot Perks, and all that stuff, but it's really hard to say when the right time to buy those things is for you. And this is why I'm limiting my updated gearing guide to this point. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.